Welcome. If you're watching uh, this sneak preview for our newest Seeing Red at the Movie series, I am Laura Lee Scott, and I'm here today with Ken Silvestro, who's coming to us all the way from Montana. Ken, thank you so much for uh, having this conversation with me today. Um, and we just want to give you a, a little bit of a sneak peek behind the curtains into what Ken is going to be talking about and sharing about relative to the film he's selected um, for this series, which is the 2014 film, Georgia O'Keeffe. And Ken, I, you know, we were talking before now, and I, I you know, mentioned I had just gone back and watched this film again for the second time last night and was just so impressed with so much of it. The themes are so rich. Uh, in this film. The cinematography is beautiful. I mean, Georgia O'Keeffe's life and work is just uh, amazing. So let me ask you this. Why did you choose this film in particular to talk about this theme for this series, which is individuation and intimacy in film and cinema? Well, first of all, let me say it's a pleasure to be with you, Lauren Lee. Thank you for this opportunity. The film is so poignant, it's so rich in the individuation symbolism. In fact, when I look at the film for the fourth time, I look at it as, at it as a dream more than as a film. Mm. But nevertheless, the individuation process is being depicted so clearly, and there's a very deep and very powerful love that Georgia feels for Stiglitz. Stiglitz, is a his love is a little different. His mm. love is more related to what I refer to as a necessary fiction. But Georgia O'Keeffe, she has a love that I refer to as purity of love. Mm. And so we have the intimacy and we have the individuation process being portrayed in this film. And of course, the question is, does one require the other? And that will be a question that we'll hopefully try to address when we do our presentation. Wow. I mean, profound, profound question. And, and so I... I I love what you're, where you're going with this already, you know, relative to Stiglitz, who was 24 years older, right, than, right. than Georgia O'Keeffe in real life, and started off initially as her kind of professional uh, promoter and promoter of her work, and then the personal relationship kicked in. And so looking at this through the lens of both through the eyes of Georgia O'Keeffe's individuation process, and then also Alfred Stiglitz, and two very different versions of love in this. So, so can you, and I love the term you just brought up, necessary fictions that I think you're relating to projection. Can you tell us a little bit about where you're going to be going with that? Well, you're, you're certainly accurate when you say related to projection. In, uh, the, in, the, in my presentation of necessary fictions, there are two levels where this occurs. It's at a conscious level, where people live out what they consider to be love, but it's really more a conscious decision to stay in a situation that um, in a sense fools them into thinking they're in love. And there's the necessary fiction per piece. And the second level is the personal unconscious where complex has become very active in projections and in the dynamics between the two individuals. And again, the necessary fiction is the dynamic of the complexes that's being played out. Hmm. The purity of love is at the very deep level. That's an expression from the self, the center of the psyche. And when somebody can relate to that center and express and feel and experience love from that center, that's the purity. We hear about this purity from many mystics over the years and many people who uh, connect to the divine or God or uh, goddess or whatever, and however they describe it. Hmm. Fascinating. I can't wait to for you to really take us on a deep dive um, in into, you know, into that. And let me ask you one final little kind of I'm just going to throw this out here. Um, you know, so when we're looking at this relationship between O'Keefe and, and Stieglitz and, and we see clearly, really, the film shows us I think the film does a great job of kind of giving you insight into each of them. Right. I mean, it's focused on Georgia O'Keefe, but you're also getting, I think, an insight into Stieglitz and, and his issues as a, a aging man who's still in some ways really struggling to find himself and establish himself and, and his work. I mean, does, does narcissism come into this film in any way and in that necessary projections, do you think, or, or no? 
Oh no, absolutely. Stiglitz has a narcissistic element that is portrayed throughout the movie. He is very, as you said a few minutes ago, in helping Georgia um, move her world. But his narcissism is a motivation for doing that. Mm. He sees, in fact, he says to her at one time, I made you. He says, you didn't make me. And his narcissism says, I made you and I put you in the world. And of course he put her in the world, but he didn't make her. She's already in her own process and very creative. And that's the piece that's so different. But yes, to answer your question, Stiglitz has a, a narcissistic element. He's living the, a um, necessary fiction for his narcissism. Yeah, wow, fascinating. Ken, thank you so much. So for those of you who are listening, Get on board with the Seeing Red of the Movie series. Um, you can find us at uh, www.thesophiacenter.com or you can email us and we'd be happy to get you signed up and registered. Ken will be presenting on the film Georgia O'Keeffe uh, on, let's see, Wednesday, February 9th. We start at, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so there's still time to register for the series. Ken, thank you. Thank you so much. And I look forward to being a part of uh, just sitting back and grabbing a bucket of popcorn and listening as you uh, take us through this film <laughs> and this life. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Florley.